everybody. Welcome to the game plan as we get started on this Friday. All right, so we got the PPI data just hitting, and holy cow, markets are reacting. Another hot number following the CPI earlier this week. So inflation all of a sudden doesn't look like it's going to that magical 2% level. All right, next up, what I want to do, folks, before we get into this, just a reminder, if you follow us on Twitter, and I, when I say the us, it's verified investing on YouTube or Twitter, you can win this bar. And again, yesterday, I think it was around $22 per ounce. This is 100 ounces. That's $2,200. But I was even told that this bar trades at a premium of around $2 extra. So $2,400 right here. All you have to do is click follow either on YouTube or Twitter for verified investing. If you do both, you get double the chance to win. So it's not a bad deal. All right, let's get right into the charts here, guys. We have lots to discuss. So if we take a look here, and we look at what exactly is going on, we see that very clear, uh, clearly we can look and set the PPI data here. So again, PPI data coming out. And take a look at how hot these numbers are. This is actually remarkable. So again, actual number was 0.3% on month over month. It, the forecast was 0.1%. So again, a 0.2% beat, that is a big jump. And think about this, last month, it was negative at 0.1%, okay? So now we look at the year over year, 0.9%, uh, expectations were 0.7, last time it was 0.1 or 1%, month over month is 0.5, or that was the actual number versus 0.1. So again, markets anticipated a 0.1% PPI data number here. They got a 0.5. So again, any way you cut it, every single number here, forecast for the core PPI year over year was 0.6. It came in at 2%. What does this mean? It means more trouble for the Federal Reserve and its ability to cut interest rates aggressively should the economy weaken. And by the way, the fact that we're seeing inflation starting to move up now again. And by the way, I want to be clear. As of now, I don't really anticipate that we're going to see a massive jump in inflation in the near term. But it's just the fact that it's moving back up again a little bit that it's going to cause problems in the narrative that the Fed can somehow magically continue to lower rates or start lowering rates later this year. Couple other key points here, guys. Just going through it real quick. Cisco, I'm pointing this out, cutting 4,000 jobs. I've talked to you guys about the job cuts that we've seen over and over again. Applied materials crushed earnings on positive chip guidance. Stock is up 11.5%. And Coinbase, many of you guys love your Coinbase here. They actually did really well here, but it kind of makes sense, right? Crypto continues to go up. Generally, the alts are doing well. Generally, Bitcoin now again above 50,000. And so they're going to see more action and that's translating into positive earnings lastly down at the very bottom here it might be hard to see but roku guys roku is one that stands out to me because we saw meta earnings do so so well and again the stock ripped up but every other social media kind of advertising play has struggled including snapchat and now roku roku's getting roasted today guys 16 and a half percent drop on Roku. All right, just jumping back over here, I want to continue through. Let's take a look at the Fed Watch Tool. The Fed Watch Tool is telling us that, again, markets anticipating still approximately two rate cuts, or, uh, excuse me, four rate cuts. And the reason why this is important is because, again, as we see inflation going up, notice how it used to be all the way down here where rate cuts, we had the market pricing in going back to somewhere in this vicinity for interest rates. Now, by the end of this year, all right, so this is the end of 2024 right here, we're, we're expected to only see a Fed funds rate around 4.5% to 4.75%, as we can see right here. So again, huge change from just a few months ago in what the, the, the projections are saying. Now, the market's still pricing in in early 2025, a good chance that we're going to see an additional cut. But again, the inflation is the worst scenario because think about this. There's something called stagflation. Stagflation is the worst case scenario. That is the Armageddon of economic situations. Stagflation means inflation goes up 
while you see people losing jobs and ultimately the economy going down. Generally, if you look at inflation, it goes up when there's a better economy because more people have money, they spend more money, and that causes inflation to go up. But again, when you have the, the economy going down and inflation still going up, think about how hard that is for people where you have someone losing their job, but costs of goods are going up anyways. It's the worst case of all scenarios. Okay, next we go on here a little bit further. Other guys, I just wanted to show you this. I think this is important to look at. You know, we talk about how you know you, you have a scenario where where you know supposedly we've been in a restricted environment, yet we have stocks at all-time highs, right? And then you look at things like this, which is the U.S. debt, which now is you know continuing to move above 34 trillion. But just since 2021, look at the increase in the U.S. debt. Look at the increase in credit card debt. Now, credit card debt is not factored into M2 money supply. So again. Again, money supply, you've seen a little pullback, then sideways, and it's starting to uptick again. But you don't even include things like this, which to me is ludicrous because, again, if I spend money on my credit card, that money goes to the merchant. All right, yeah, I have to pay that money to the credit card company, but it's still money in the system. It's still money there as well. So again, my point being here, and this, by the way, is the Federal Reserve balance sheet. So after such a great economy for the last few years, let's think about exactly how much the Fed has reduced their balance sheet, and it certainly isn't much. Basically, they topped out around $9 trillion. They've come back to about $7.5 trillion. That's the entire reduction in their balance sheet. And look at what happened during COVID. This is COVID right up to here. And again, all they were able to do during this amazing economy with record un record employment numbers, right? Unemployment down in the 3% range. This is all they were able to reduce it. Now, the issue here is that what happens is what happens when the economy starts to sputter and goes into a recession? You know what happens, right? I think we all know what happens. That number has another jump to it, just like probably the U.S. debt does and everything else. And by the way, that pushes me more towards my long-term narrative of being bullish on Bitcoin. Yeah, sure, I shorted as a swing trader here and there. I'm short right now as a swing trader. But the long-term narrative remains bullish for Bitcoin as well as gold. And gold, to be honest, one of the most heavily underinvested assets right now, and that should be taken note of. All right, looking at the data here, guys, we see the S&P 500. It is falling on the back of that PPI data. We have seen a little bit of a bounce. Now, we were trading up from yesterday, right? So we were right around this area right here. We were opening higher, markets were trading higher, and then they kind of pushed back down. Well, but essentially, we're right around the flat line going into the, uh, the opening bell here in just about 20 minutes or so. All right, looking at the daily chart, this is where things get a little bit more intriguing for me because the daily chart continues to show us that we're trading in this bigger wedge pattern and we're coming to a head, right? So even up here, let's say we kind of go like this, at some point you have to break out or you break to the downside. And again, if you break to the downside, this would be a long-term trend line going all the way back to basically October of last year. And that again, could be a big drop in the markets. On the other side, if we do break out of this, then you could have another leg up in the market. That's very possible. So as a technician, I'm trying not to assume anything too much. Granted, I do have shorts out there, but for the most part, you have to be aware that you could still break above right here or break down here, and that will be a significant move in that direction. Quickly going to the U.S. dollar, take a look at the U.S. dollar here. The U.S. dollar got a big pump on that PPI data because, again, it means the Fed's likely, the Fed, Federal Reserve cannot cut rates as easily as they hoped because inflation is beginning to uptick. All right, so again, up move here on the dollar. We are pulling back just a little bit, but again, nice little move to the upside. Looking at the daily chart of the dollar, look at where we still are stuck, though. We're still stuck in this bigger down sloping trend line. This was a few days ago's high, and this is where we are today. So we're still below that resistance. I'm still skeptical that the dollar is actually going to get through this level. So we have to watch and see, do we see a move back down to the downside here? 
and, and ultimately fight this off and come back in here. And again, the question then will be, I think, if that ends up happening, it's probably not not inflation related, but jobs related. So again, we're getting towards the second half of February. Let's watch that that non-farm payrolls number at the beginning of March. All right, a couple other things here to go over real quick, guys. The 10-year yield, same sort of deal, jumps up on that news. It is coming back in just a little bit. If we look at the daily chart real quick here, we can see that we're still stuck underneath my ultimate target on the 10-year yield. And the 10-year yield, I still think, can go just a little bit higher, maybe even today. Maybe we touch it today during the market hours. Do we push up to that 3.37 level, 3.4 level? But once we get there, I would generally start to favor a roll back over to the downside. And again, I think a weaker economy is going to start to show. One thing to note on the weaker economy, guys, you do have a scenario here where we have seen retail sales starting to stumble. Okay, so again, retail sales in January came out yesterday. They were weaker than expected, and that again, potentially showing that the consumer is starting to pull back. I was a big believer that people wanted to spend money for Christmas because it's the holidays. People generally like giving, but they probably were already feeling pressure then, but just did it anyways because it was Christmas. What happens now in January, February, March? Do we start to see kind of the more and more pullback from the consumer? And remember, the government, or I should say, the economy has been driven on by the consumer for long periods of time. NVIDIA. NVIDIA today trading up on the day, guys. Again, these stocks are incredibly hot right now. And again, where is this going? I don't know if anyone truly knows, but again, NVIDIA trading up about, I think it's about 13, 14 bucks here pre-market. And again, this move has been incredible. It is now the third biggest company in the markets, basically right behind Microsoft and Apple. Uh, speaking of Apple, I do want to just point something out here, guys. Apple tested a major break breakdown line yesterday. Take a look at this, right? So again, Apple, you can see this trend line going back to the beginning of 2023 connects right through this low, right through this low, and we hit it here and we hit it here. Yesterday, it bounced up just a bit. But if this line breaks on Apple, that is a lot of trouble for Apple right there. And again, that's something I'm watching over the next week or two to see if that breaks. Now, Apple has not become the favorite anymore. It's kind of lost its luster to NVIDIA. NVIDIA now, you could arguably say, is the favorite along with Microsoft. And again, that's kind of becoming out of favor. I do think it ultimately breaks down because it's just so overinvested. You will see some reallocation of capital. A Couple other charts here, guys, here. Uh, SMCI, let's talk about this one. This is just absolutely insane. This has now become a meme stock with the insanity that's pushing it up. Yes, it's overbought. It's it's been overbought for a long period of time. It's up again about $74 or $70 this morning as it comes into the day. Uh, if we look at the weekly chart, I want to show you guys this weekly chart. This is incredible. And by the way, when GameStop was at its highest point, it had a market cap of about $22 billion. This now has a $60 billion market cap. But look at this weekly chart. Incredible movement just this week alone from basically $740 from a close, maybe even $730 all the way up to 1004 close yesterday and today it's trading at 1074 or so incredible move this will end badly but you don't know when it ends could it go to 1100 1200 yeah it could eventually does it pull back to 500 or 400 yes it will i showed you yesterday in the game plan how these type of things they get to be cult followings where people just kind of pull the same shenanigans they did in gamestop amc by buying these way out of the money calls which then creates the institution that is selling that call to have to buy a little stock to protect themselves because this is going up so quickly Ultimately, we know GameStop collapsed right back down. We know AMC did. This will be much the same. You could say, oh, well, these guys have earnings. Yes, they do. But ultimately, the same thing will happen where it comes back down to a reasonable price, probably in that $500 level. That's what I would guess. All right, Coinbase and Roku. Let's touch on Roku first here, guys. So Roku reporting earnings after the bell here. And if we look at Roku, look at that drop. So I mentioned to you guys, again, we have a pretty nasty drop on Roku on the back of advertising issues. They're struggling here quite a bit. Now, if we look at this, it's trading around $78. Where is our buy level? Let's take a look here. So right off the bat, there's a gap window around $70 right here. 
I would say this area is your first high risk level, around $70. But really, if we look at this upsloping trend line here, right, and we connect it right through here, this coexists with this level with a gap fill right here. That's my zone. I don't know if it gets there. This is around 60 to $62. But if it did flush to 60 or 62, that becomes a really good technical area of support. All right, let's keep on going here. Let's touch on Coinbase, which is having a monster move as well today. Flipping over to the intraday chart, we can see again the big move up on earnings here on Coinbase. And remember, when people, by the way, this happened to Robin Hood too, right? Robinhood reported earnings, I think, just the day before. They did really well because everyone's so excited about investing. It's that vibe of 2021 where everything is just going nuts. And ultimately, again, they're seeing the results of people that are getting back in and creating fees, more and more fees for Coinbase and pushing it up right now at $188 per share. If we go to the daily chart, couple levels here, there's a level, a double top coming right up in this range at around 188. That will be a double top and if it pushes through that then you got to start talking about probably around that 200 even number I'm just trying to go back out here and see what that could be let's look at this I'm just gonna draw a couple trend lines here what if we take this pivot point here and just draw it up there that's 205 interesting look at this guys so again I love how that you have the coordination of levels but at 205 you get right into a level here that coexists with another pivot point right there so look at that we see we have this pivot point which by the way you could actually extend that right into there you can see all this sideways chop that's your high pivot you then come over here and it coordinates with a trend line from here to here and so really 206 looks to be a a, a kind of a more logical level where you'll have significant support uh, excuse me resistance doesn't mean it's not going to pull back off this first level but again i'm giving you guys like the high risk level and then maybe the then there's no such thing as a low risk level but it's where it would be more extended with multiple factors and therefore the likelihood would be of some sort of pullback lastly before we flip to commodities and crypto just looking at this chart of um, applied materials I have a trend line here look at this going all the way back to 2017 from this high right here right right from here to here to here and that's right around 221 Right now, I believe the stock is trading in the range of, let me just flip over on my screen here to the intraday, it's trading at 206. So if it gets up to 221, this would be a huge long-term resistance on it. This would be where I would actually consider a swing trade shorting level. All right, guys, so that's a little update on those. I do wanna just jump over to my other screen, so follow me over here as we get into a couple other things here, guys. So again, let's take a look at what we have here. If we flip up to our charts, I wanna show you Bitcoin. I don't know how I didn't see this prior, guys, but there's a channel on Bitcoin that is epic. And this is, again, making me, you know, listen, there's no sort of guarantees, right? There's no sort of guarantees in the charts. But basically, you see this low down here, right to this low. You do a perfectly parallel channel, which you can do on TradingView very, very easily. Right through here, right through here. And look at yesterday. It hit right there. Now, I was hoping for a topping tail yesterday on the daily chart of Bitcoin. It didn't happen. So that doesn't give me as firm kind of, you know, you know, signals that the top is in here. So we have to watch and see what it does today. But essentially, at least we know we're at key resistance here. If it breaks through this level at 53, 52, 553, you likely can head as high as around that 57 level. Okay, luckily I've left plenty of room in my trade to maneuver should I need to. I want to look at INJ. I try to look at a new crypto every single day or a different crypto every single day. This chart, again, is not performing great right now. The one thing as an investor you want to be aware of, if you're long this trade, you want to make sure that it doesn't break this line here. Notice this, right? Low to low to low to low. If it breaks here, it's going down here. And that's a big drop. If it can hold above here, there's always a chance that you could start retesting those upper highs. All right, now there is a little down sloping trend line right through here that you can watch. But right now, again, for me, as long as it's above here, there's a chance it can retest. But if it breaks here, that's really where trouble will start on INJ, injective. 
A couple other things. Gold, guys, I would assume gold is falling today based on what we're seeing in the U.S. dollar. The answer would be yes. And we can see, again, had gold had a good day yesterday, but a little bit of a pullback today. Again, this is all in the upper ranges, right? I mean, we're talking about we're so close to this key level which is your major breakout zone all along here, right here, right here. Um, that again, as long as we stay in this vicinity, eventually I do think we're gonna take that bigger breakout, but it certainly is making us wait. There's no doubt about it. It is not exactly pushing us in that direction right now, especially with the dollar gaining strength. But remember what I said. I said the dollar eventually, I do believe, will start to stall out just a little bit. Uh, silver itself, silver again is always good, especially when I'm giving away a hundred ounces of silver here um, you can see it's trading right now just around 23 so look at that 23 bucks per per ounce which actually puts that 100 ounces at 2300 plus the premium of 200 so now we're at 2500 man you guys got to follow it it's a, a no-brainer giveaway right there for all you got to do is click that follow button but again for the most part you're stuck in this range let's see if we can break above it or break below it but my guess is eventually we do come up here a couple less last little charts here Oil. For oil, I'm very curious on an inflationary basis of what oil is going to do here. Very clear that we have a flat top right here. It's upticking today. If we can get above this line, I got to be honest, there's a longer term downsloping trend line around 86 to 85. That would be your upside target if we can break above this 78 to 79 dollar level right we're hovering just below 78 at this point if that happens it's going to put pressure on the cpi it just is guys i mean oil is a huge component of the cpi and that's something that we want to just pay attention to so again you know if, if oil can break down that's good for inflation coming down but if oil goes up that is a negative for inflation couple final charts here guys that i want to just go over platinum real quick you can see it's stuck in a wedge pattern here i don't really see much to do here it's just watching to see which way it can break and of course natural gas guys and again we talked about the measured move yesterday i'm going to remove it for now just because i want to keep it simple but basically natural gas just kind of doing its thing it looks like it's up a little bit on the day but for me it's this longer term trend line going all the way back to 2020 where we have this area right through these lows right all these lows and that's where we've come into and just don't forget that if you take this high to this low it might be hard to see but this high to this low it's virtually the same dollar drop on it which again we refer to as a measured move so again lots to go over here guys um you know i just want to just say again here as we get through and i'm going to grab my basketball because i do love my basketball here but what we can see here guys is that the market's continuing to kind of create uncertainty with inflation with all these other things going on my job here at the game plan is just to kind of do my best to explain what's going on give you guys ideas maybe ideas out of the box so that you can ultimately think outside the mainstream media view and really bring you all my analysis my knowledge everything that i've accumulated for 24 years right up here so on that note guys you have a wonderful day and i will talk to you later take care